Yo, 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 what is up, guys? It is the man in the can, it is Super Pigman, and today I will be doing another video on the Kenji universe. Today, I will be telling you why they are a good choice to support in our current state of the world. There are many reasons why you should support them, but I'll go over like some main points, you know, to tell you guys. So, the first is being the fact that people hate the Holy Nation. Now, I don't know why they have the stigma that the Holy Nation's bad when they, they aren't that bad after all. Check out that video. Um, now this is a good thing and I say this only only because the holy nation blocked the advancement of technology for humans and just everyone on the planet while on the other hand the Shek could care less about the whole tech issue they really only care about their pride this is a good for the planet of Kenshi too because then there would actually there would actually be advancements in society the main one being that women and people in general won't be massacred just because your neighbors say you're a follower of narco kind of if you want to relate this to a real world situation kind of like mccarthyism if you are you know you might hollywood was communism and stuff like that or the salem witch trials which you know it was this huge thing that i mean you guys can look them up it's they're really famous and world world famous to be exact that caused the lives of people then there's also the factor that if you're not a Shek, you won't be in the military because they only want Shek in the military. Unless you kill the Bugmaster, then that's a different story. And you will also be a second class citizen, which honestly isn't really that bad. Now, I would personally like being a second class citizen over being a slave in the United Cities or being killed in the Holy Nation. Because somebody might say I'm a follower of narco, I might not confide with some of the rules or stuff like that. Also, not needing to be in the military would also boost populations of people like Scorchies and also Greenlanders. Now, let's get into the second part. Now, we know that the Shek had in recent, like, you know, in just recent, you know, history of theirs, has had a revolution where Esteba crowned herself the Queen of All Shek by challenging the King, which I forgot his name, I'm, my bad, <laughs> said peace with the UC, which is smart, and other people she, she was warring with. Then she started trade with the swamp people and also the United Cities, which is not honestly that bad because, um, you know, the United Cities do have a lot of produce. So this was done so she could promote the economic growth of her country. She saved the Shek people too before they ran themselves into extinct because what they were doing, they were just fighting and fighting and fighting and they did not stop fighting. Even if they died, it didn't matter. And they were on the verge of being extinct. With this new open trade and growth in Czech population, it would also promote immigration from other nations to come to Esteba's nation. This will in turn produce more economic growth where she can focus on the standard of life, which you kind of do see that there's a better standard of life in the Czech kingdom than what you would believe. Or increasing more trade, which, you know, wouldn't be that bad because if you think about it, people that are really good at trade are the Scorchlanders. So maybe they might, you know, house a little bit more Scorchlanders or stuff like that. Get more trade caravans to come through. And also, an another cool thing about the Shek are that they don't have slaves. Now, that's a really cool thing because then that means everybody has a fair shot at getting rich pretty much. I mean, they don't really value the sense of money like you know greenlanders or scorchlanders or the united cities holy nation or anybody really does they say that you know money won't buy your respect here you really just have to earn it there but anyways let's also talk about what she might even fund is to get a bigger army this can this can make her combat the holy nation who will not forget what happened to them during the second empire and will always try to get back at them and the holy nation is always trying to like provoke you know, the Shaq, even after they declared peace with the United Cities, you know, everybody that they were pretty much warring with, and they actually were able to, Esteba's actually been a really good leader because she's been able to, you know, get trade, actual trade start started and going, you know, making her place a little bit more profitable. But I also believe she did declare peace because of the berserkers down south, the, uh, you know, the, uh, who was it, Tour of the Gutless, and also um crawls chosen which um kind of in they all kind of believe the old way of living they don't really confine with the stebas rule but with this piece she does have you know a lot more um what, what would you say authority over the whole entire nation and she can also focus on making the nation better in general 
and how not to make a na nation better than build funding a bigger army so you can actually combat the holy nation when they decide they would march down on you now the third part is their army now <laughs> of course they start with a really small army but with your help you can help them flourish into a successful nation what i mean by this is taking out um holy mines is the main one and um bases, that's what they're called the holy military bases and if you take out those they pretty much start growing their army and they actually there's something cool that this is like a little tip type of thing is that if you're allied with them they will actually the leader of their patrol will actually follow you if you go and talk to them which is pretty cool you know i'm not gonna lie but anyways let's go back to the main point now i don't know about you guys but i would personally feel like the safest person behind the walls of a Shek city and let me tell you why the main reason the main reason if you can't tell is that they will fight and keep fighting until they lead, literally either die or lose all their limbs now think about that someone just keeps on swinging and i don't even think if they lost all their limbs they would stop swinging but they keep swinging they keep swinging they keep swinging no matter how many times you knock them down they keep on getting back up that's just them being arrogant about their pride they don't want to let that let that go away and that's freaking scary if you get that in mass numbers now this could be very scary to their opponents but very motivating to you as a citizen in the Czech kingdom because you know you personally know you will be protected by them and will want to support them because they will protect you by any means necessary so you will support them more and more and more by like any means necessary to the unholy nation this is why they fear them so much not not only because of the past but because of the threat that they pose as if their armies grow larger they would have an actual bloody war now this war would be so bloody that both sides would pretty much be super weak afterwards like very very weak and i don't even know who would win in that war <laughs> if you know they actually grew their army and all that but their armies also follow a strict set of obedience to their leaders and generals of their patrols and will give their lives for anybody of their, you know, pretty much um, platoon or troop or, you know, squad. Can the other nations say, really say the same, that they would give up their lives? Because we know after fighting the, after fighting the holy nation is that, but yeah, so, but you know, the other nations really can't say the same about anything that the Shek do support. And, you know, the HN does have manpower. Like, the Holy Nation has a lot of manpower, but not the full support. And what I mean by this is that there is unrest in the Holy Nation. If you really do watch closely, then if you take a look towards the United Cities, there's a lot of problems with them. Let's just say that they are fighting a 3-1 three front war or would be you know depending on what your character would do and if you look to the swamp then they're pretty much just a coalition of a bunch of kings if you really think about it but you know this is this is why in my own modest opinion why the Shek would be good for the kenshi war they the kenshi war, world they offer a lot of good things with the least amount of bad things i personally always love the Shek because they are kind of funny with their beliefs, you know, but anyways, hopefully you guys do enjoy the video. Remember, leave a like and subscribe. We're almost at 500. We're like about 60 away. You know, it's pretty far, but pretty close. Hopefully you guys do enjoy. Peace.